We have implemented a 12th key project called Pushing Pawing in Port Nectars and Dharma Education District between 2006 to 9. At virtually, we have spent our time in the farmer's field and cultivated the first crop uh, by the scientists. And the farmers and the extra workers were just uh, witnesses. Thereafter, the program was scaled up to 70,000 hectares across the state. Now it is being picked up by the Union Planning Commission and it is being scaled up across the country. Let me talk about my experience of handling small and marginal farmers in the power project. Say, the context matters. Many other times, the subject and context, they change together. Or uh, sometimes, the subject change faster than the context or vice versa. As far as abuse is concerned, there are four different dimensions. The first is production driven dimension, that is purely agrarian, where cereals and pulses and oil seeds were grown. Then, the next dimension was added, that is market driven agriculture. A shift from production driven agriculture and to market driven agriculture is an unrelated shift. Because the entire production design will not be changed to suit the, suit the market arena. Instead of looking at things as a form, get to the market and look around what is the local market, what are the markets within India, what are the market elsewhere. So from that standpoint, if you look at agriculture and redo it and, and design a package that becomes more than agriculture, then comes the third consumer <coughs> journey. So in the WTO economy, the market boundaries have been erased and all the consumers and 140 nations are our consumers. Multinationals are coming in and through their window, we will be able to put our product in all the nations. So that makes sense. Then the fourth dimension is the environment. Whatever, whatever we do in the name of agriculture, it should not impair the ecology, environment, and ultimately the health of the human kind. So, the, all the discussions <coughs> across the country about uh, small and marginal farmers are focusing around in the production driven area. Now we have switched over to almost the third phase with the FDA we are facing, with the WTO and the PCs we are facing and the work is in the first phase no institutional mechanism was required to address the issues of the small and marginal farmers and no issues. In the second phase, the NGO intervened, government intervened, a corporate intervened to corporate uh, social responsibility but in the third and fourth sector no more the government, no more NGOs, no more CAR when they act independently, they are nothing they could achieve. The reason, NGOs by default, they are non profit organization. They cannot make entrepreneurs by default. And the corporates, they are pakka businessmen. They will not see that some more businessmen are emerging. They are false apart. And how to go about it? Say since first five-year plan to twelfth five-year plan in the QRT program, the budget support and policy support was given to tech, gen, technology generation, R&D, 63 SEUs and 136 ICR institutions, they have been funded like anything. Then second, exclusion mechanism the state. They have like 1,000 crores with the 20,000 establishment, the money is being spent. But the third element in the QRT process the user, the capacity building aspect was totally ignored, no funding support, no policy support. Say so the technical training we do to the KVS, that is that is different. But the managerial capability, how to manage the farm resources, how to manage the farm income, how to uh, manage the inputs, how to manage the technology. We do the same technology to hundred farmers in adequate <coughs> dimension then hardly one or two are able to pick it up and then uh, uh, get the impact. So this part, the year the planning commission missed it. Now, from the production area, we get into market, two things are virtually 
emerging. One is no more peasant farming, and the here of that, in the small farmers are grouped and built and converted to get some kind of commodity groups, maybe farmers already <coughs> companies, some kind of collectives, and if you are not able to promote, no, they are for small and large farmers. Then the production driven agriculture into market driven agriculture, to say it is simple, but to make it, it is very difficult. And then, certified systems of production are coming into the scene. GM certification, organic form certification. Unless the certified production is ensured, you cannot take your produce outside the boundaries of our country. That's a message. And then, look at the yield gap between the farmer, between blocks, between districts, and between states. It's too wide. The sugar can average, natural average is 60 metric tons per acre. Our Tamil Nadu average is 60, uh, 40 metric tons per acre. But whereas the farmers are able to take 100 metric tons per acre. So such so yield gap is there. For this, mass extension, mass dis dissemination of technology is of no use. Individual form based intervening adversely is a must. Now IT is a tool. In Tamil Nadu, there are 85 black farm families. Out of a certain percent, they are belonging into small and marginal category. And the documentation has started to enlist, to document the geography of the farm, the crop, the farmer, farmer profile, and then how to link it to your next part. So that work is going So that way, if the producer groups are organized and the groups are dealt with an expert, then things can change. <coughs> Who will do this? <coughs> NGOs, the farmer will not believe an NGO because 90% of the NGOs are not, they deliver something, they give some information, beyond that they don't depend too much on NGOs. The corporates, they never believe because the corporates are exploitative in nature and they never used to help the farmer. That is, that is, the, that is the impression every farmer is having. Then, how to make the farmer to accept the NGO, to accept a corporate? We will have to bring in a catalyst, we will have to bring in a platform that is the universities. All 63 universities across the country, all conventional universities across the country, <coughs> right now, they don't have the social commitment, the social responsibility uh, for what the budget has been given to such institutions. Say, for example, other universities, if you say which university, the, the responsibility ends at the farm gate. I will, uh, I will help the farmer to produce maximum possible. Beyond that, I will not go into the market. If functionally, if, we, if they are transformed into food universities, so every scientist, uh, the social scientist, or a pathologist, or entomologist, or a breeder, they have to go beyond the farm, be in the value chain, till it reaches the consumer. So how to convert all the average universities functionally as food universities, that's one thing. Generally, they will, they will be able to get linked to the NGOs and corporates, and then do justice for the farmer. Can we do this at this rate or something like that? Say, what's the mechanism? We need to have some mechanism. So ICR has established 693 Krishi Indian Kendra, one at every district across the country. They are just doing the production extension. How to maximize the production for unit area or for unit drop of water. Now, the uh, stage has come, we need to create entrepreneurial skills among the farmers, whether the small, medium or big farmer. Even a big farmer or small farmer, he may be successful, very much successful in the field, but he is still really in the market. That is what we are witnessing for the years. Then why not the Chrissy Business Kendra, one for each state, exclusively to take up to build up the managerial capability of farmer, particularly to win in the market. Can we do that? Suppose, if this mechanism is put into system, 
all the three elements will be so important. It's a human situation for everyone. If a uh, university and NGO, if they join together, the university will get focused on the development of issues, development of needs of the society, development of needs of the state. Equally, the corporates, when they join with the university, then the global linkage, the intricacies of uh, uh, the e-commerce, each trade, the good thing will be supported. No corporate will be successful unless the farmers are integrated on one side and market is lifted on the other side. Without forward integration and backward integration, no agree-based industry can move forward from now on. <coughs> what this Krishi Krishna Gandhra will do? Promote commodity groups, organize by SLR made, promote producer companies, market exposure basis, farm equal tourism, and such a kind. And here, university, NGO, and corporate can join. Corporate can give infrastructure facilities and hire uh, uh, resource persons elsewhere across the nation, across the country. And NGO can prepare the farmer to undergo such, such kind of capacity building. The university can act as a platform, medium, as a presentator to all the rest of the companies. So this is all the detailed working on how the farmers can be enriched with knowledge and production as well as marketing and also what is market extension and what is market led agriculture, how value can be added not only to the farm producers but also to these farm. So a striking example I will quote, 3,200 farmers with the Michigan State University and the TNA scientists, we landed at Tate, so one of the cluster, growing several varieties. And now, there is a banana grower association, there is a corporate, Palm Trust Banana Corporate, with a 20 crore facility to handle 700 metric tons of G9 banana alone. Now we have become a stiff competitor for the Maharashtra banana in the Gulf market and as well as in the European market. And here, the net income has gone from 60,000 rupees per acre to 2.5 lakhs. Farmer only one acre, farmer only 20 acre, everybody is here. Common package of practices protocol is implemented when it is one, one acre farm or it is 20 acre farm. That kind of technical input, financial support, the company mobilizes. The company says, the law of the farmers are my farmers. And the farmer said, this company is my company. That kind of moral integration, <laughs> Digital Chat University and PNIU, we are able to put it in the minds of the trader is not from alien place. One of the farmer has become the trader. He was buying and selling banana at Tene. He took him to supermarket Bangalore. Then he he has uh, got exposed to the ripening facility in auction mechanism. Then he brought some several truckloads of things to be ripened and sent it to Chennai. And that time he thought, why should I pay 1 to 50 pounds per kg? Why I should not develop that facility in my place itself? On seeing this, so this is, the, this is how the banana has grown for 2004. And now it has gone high tech. Extremely high tech. Bunch cap and fruit cap. Each and every fruit is cap because each and every fruit is labeled. How to harvest hygienically, how to transport hygienically, how to process it hygienically, pack it and set it for domestic market as well as for export market. And Last uh, 19, we had a discussion at the reunion planning commission with the Samitra Choudhury member and six other advisors. This banana dryers, they made a proposal to the union planning commission. Now you are running banana train between Bushawan to Delhi. They said that why we should not run the train for perishables from Chennai to Agra. All the producers can, from the south can be sent to north. <coughs> To cattle to the next Saudi, five states in the north. Equally, five, from five states, producers can be brought to the south to cattle to the next Saudi, uh, five states in the south. That means the farmers market arena it is expanded like anything. And throughout the year, 
quality produce is assured and for this transaction the field must be put under high-tech calculation whether it's one acre pump or five acre pump, no, no differentiation. The package is given equal to all. So the survey that they are taking it up in that way. And Alex, please. I am almost done. I am almost done. Another two minutes. Okay. 5,000 mango farmers, they have been working on the NDAP scheme over seven years. The mango fed, now they are going for a full set of the And then Krishna, Krishna is mango. The branded mango, it is going to reach almost all parts of the country in one time. And 160 pandal vegetable farmers, they have organized themselves and they are dictating price to the buyers. Only the president will fix the price once in 15 days. Goa, the poor man's apple, morning at that, instead of 200 fruits, let there be 100 fruits. The foam jacketed fruit is harvested and packed by 8.30. By 8, 12 it comes to Polachi, by 8.30 it is lifted to Gulf. Earlier the price was 10 rupees, the farmers were running out of the merchants. Now, <coughs> They have created their own space for market, the buyers are coming to their side. 1,310 small farmers owning 25 cents to one acre. The jasmine, 8 months in a year, the action starts by 7 o'clock and closes by 12.30 in the morning. The price is fixed by the association president, secretary and uh, treasurer. He, she used to hold two or three cell phones and assess the demand for Hyderabad, Mysore, UK, Dubai and internal market. Then after processing the demand, they declare the price. Rosemary, purely poor tribal women who are cultivating rocky earlier, now with rosemary. Grapes, five times in a year we can prune, and round the year you will be able to produce the grapes. Now it was not reaching the consumers. This producer company has taken up this venture. Considering all the four lane roads as they extend that city, even the city sleeps for 10 hours, whereas on the four lane road it never sleeps 24 hours. That means double the population is on the road for market, the road product. <coughs> and Christian Farming Producer Company, two are in existence now, and have, apart from input sales, there are also vegetables for sending to Maldives, and also they have already established there. Uh, uh, pure bulk also. The finally, what I am saying is, all agricultural universities will have to be taken first to function as functional, functionally food universities, and then interface with NGOs and corporate to take the small and marginal farmers at a time zone. So.